Hi there, my name is Mark and I'd like to show you a website that I helped develop called whiteboardfox.com. It's a way to draw on a virtual whiteboard and let other people watch in real time as you draw. Let's take a look. Imagine that I'm in San Francisco and my colleague Sally is in New York. To begin, I go to whiteboardfox.com and press the big orange button and immediately I can start drawing. Now to share this drawing with Sally, all I need to do is send her a link to this web page, just like I might send her a link to any other web page on the internet. In this case, the link is whiteboardfox.com slash 554-9224-9513. To save Sally from having to type that into her browser, I'm going to email her the link. Note that she can use any tablet, computer, or laptop. She doesn't need to install any software, and she doesn't need to set up any user accounts. All she has to do is click on the link I emailed her. And Sally can see exactly what I see. As I make changes to the drawing, Sally can see those changes in real time. Sally can also make changes which are reflected in my view. It's easy to erase parts of the drawing. And if I erase too much, I can just press the undo button until I get back to where I was. Now Sally actually has an advantage over me because her Samsung tablet comes with a stylus pen. So for her, drawing fine detail like text is quick and easy. But I have to use a fingertip on my iPad, so I have to zoom in to draw the same level of detail. Now that works, but it doesn't quite feel as natural. Worse still is when I have to draw with a mouse. Desktop computers have large screens, so they're great for watching someone draw, but it just feels a bit clunky when you have to use the mouse to draw. So Sally's on the phone and she says, I'm creating a website for people to manage their digital photographs, and I want users to log into my website using their Facebook password. How would that work? So I say to Sally, OK, I'll show you. You've got your website here. And you've got a user over here. Let's call him Fred. Now when Fred visits your website, his browser sends a request to get your home page. And that home page includes a login button. When Fred clicks that login button, his browser sends a request to facebook.com. Facebook replies saying, Hey Fred, are you sure you want to log in to Sally's website and give it your email address? Fred clicks yes, so Facebook sends a response that includes a special authorization code. His browser then immediately forwards it to your website and your website, in turn, forwards it to facebook.com, requesting Fred's user ID and email address. Facebook gives you that information because you've supplied a valid authorization code. Your website uses that ID to query its database for a list of Fred's photos. It then sends that list of photos back to Fred. The whole process shown in red only takes a few seconds. Sally says, that's great, thanks for that explanation, and she goes off to develop her website. Now, as you're watching this video, think about how difficult it would be for me to explain that login process to her without a virtual whiteboard. Sally would find it much more difficult to understand. Now, in what other situations does a whiteboard help to communicate? A classic example is a teacher trying to explain something to students. Let's say I ask a student, what is one third plus one quarter? It certainly helps to draw the equation on a whiteboard. I can then highlight the denominators.
It might also help to draw circles representing each component of the equation. First, showing what one third looks like, then one quarter, then the total. I would then go on to divide the circles into 12 and show that the total was 7 twelfths. Clearly, teaching fractions would be virtually impossible without drawing numbers or pictures. But it's not all about serious work and study. If you have kids, you know how much they love to draw. One of the games I like to play with children is, guess what I'm drawing? They shout out, it's a cow, or it's a sheep, it's a donkey, it's a horse, or it's a cat. And finally, it's a pig. Yes, it's a pig. So we can see that a whiteboard is useful when both working and playing with other people. But it can also be useful when you're not doing anything with other people. That is, you can use it to keep a private notes that you don't intend to share with anyone. Here's an example. This is what's called a class diagram. And as a computer programmer, I love to draw these little diagrams to help me understand the design of a computer program. This one happens to be the design for Whiteboard Fox itself. Now, as you can see, the problem with pen and paper is that the class diagram can get very messy as the design of the program changes. But with Whiteboard Fox, it's easy to erase lines and make changes. This particular change represents how Whiteboard Fox was altered to allow users to add pictures to their virtual whiteboards. And because the virtual whiteboard has no edges, I can extend the diagram in any direction without it looking cramped. And finally, here's another private note. It's simply my to-do list. And I guess I can now cross this item off. So thanks for watching this demonstration. And I hope you enjoy using whiteboardfox.com.